Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fixing Garage. I'm Justin. Today we're working on my car again. It's a 2014 Dodge Charger RT. It's getting really cold out. It's been getting to be in the 20s and 30s overnight now, and I've been trying to use my remote start in my car, and it hasn't worked in probably six months. Uh, I didn't really look into it because it, I don't drive it that much, but uh, now that it's cold and I want to warm the car up, it's time to dig into that. So. I'll show you what's wrong and what's and what's causing mine. Essentially, it's giving me the hooded jar warning, uh, and I'm going to have to replace a latch in order to fix that. I'm going to show you how I see that code in the air, so you can kind of you know verify that's your problem. But I'm going to show you how to fix it the right way as well. There's more than one way to fix it. So if you're getting this error message, the hooded jar remote start aborted, and you want to fix it, just follow along. I'll show you the part and the tools, and we'll get it done together. So let's get started. <laughs> Let's see. Hit the key fob, the remote start, and nothing. Let's see what kind of warning message we're getting here. Uh, let's see. Well, check that out. So we got remote start aborted hood ajar. So uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to fix this the right way. But this is a very unfortunate problem because you can see that my hood is most certainly not ajar. It is not open, but the car thinks it is. So I get to replace a hood latch in order to fix this. So follow along, I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you have any questions or concerns, just leave a comment and we'll dive into it. So let's get started. All right, so uh, I got Kevin with me. Look at you just looking all wilderness man going on here. All right, so um, as I mentioned, I'll have to do a hood latch and I showed you in the car hopefully already. I just came from that, you know, splicing video together or whatever, that the, uh, the warning I get is the hood is ajar and we verify that the hood is closed. Now, the way this setup works in the car is if the door is open, I think if the trunk is open and if the hood is open, the remote start will not work. Also, remote start will not work if you have a check engine light, but that's not my problem. So in this case, it's saying hood ajar, and we have this hood latch here, and uh, I'm gonna pull the cover off, but if you look down in here, you're actually gonna see a wire that goes to it, uh, like a, uh, you'll see it more when we get out of there, an actual electronic wire, and that tells the car if it's open or closed. Unfortunately, it's built into the latch, meaning that I can't do anything about it. So let me show you the new part um, that I had to order. It's really a dealer-only part, and the part number looks like it is, what, 6826-1142-AA-001. Maybe that's a newer part number, I don't know. I'll put a link. I bought it on Amazon, uh, eBay for like almost 100 bucks. Uh, but now we can get a better look at this one. Let me open it up. Show that open for you ahead of time. All right, so let's check out this one part. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. I'm really terrible at this. So we're looking at the part like this, and there is our electrical connector. And um, you know that is essentially what goes bad. You can see it's built onto the latch here. You cannot fix that. Um, it is not a separate part to repair that I could find so you get to replace the whole entire latch which costs you a pretty penny the Nice part is there's not a lot to it and I'm going to dive in on what we're going to do to get all this out But just know that that is that is likely our main issue So hopefully we're going to fix that so follow along guys I'll move to the next step and I'll show you what we've got to do Hi guys, so first thing we have to do is remove this top piece They're really just held in with little plastic, you know, um, parts there that should just pop out so really you just gotta give us a little bit of pulling and it should pop up sounds a little scary but um, there's no bolts or nothing to this it should just pop up and slide out so get that piece out that's going to expose this a little more and now we can see that electrical connector that we're talking about so for this we're going to pull this red tab out hopefully to the lettuce there we go see that little red tab gets pulled out and we can pull this off, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Sometimes they're a little stuck on there. From yeah. Being on there for years, but if you wiggle it back and forth, sometimes. I mean, it doesn't so. even matter if it breaks. It's probably just no good. You still got to press down as you do it. There we go. Yeah, there she comes. So that is our plug. That will stay. So next up is I actually think it's going to be best to unbolt this, and it looks like we've got one. What, you think 10 millimeter and two 10 millimeter that we're gonna have to go in there and get. So maybe a small ratchet, Kevin, a quarter inch ratchet with a little extension or a deep 10, we'll be able to get that off. 
Now let me give you some backstory on this. I'm replacing my entire lash to do it right. There's a few videos I've seen around where they just go to this plug and they put a resistor in, in series or parallel, whatever it's called with it, in order to fool the car to thinking the hood is closed. If you want to do that, you're watching the wrong video. I'm not doing that at all. I have no interest in being cheap and spending 10 bucks to fix it. I'll fix it the right way. And I say that because I'm in here working on this car, doing stuff, cleaning. The last thing I'm gonna do is to lean over, double tap the start button on accident, and a belt or something, you know, smack my hand and hurt me. This safety feature is there for a reason. Stick with it, fix it the right way. And, you know, I can't trust that enough that, you know, as a selling point for a car, if you ever want to get rid of it or just owning it, you know, you should have a little bit of pride and fix it the right way. You know, not that I keep mine super clean, but I definitely would not want to bypass a safety feature. So again, if you're doing that, go watch another video. I'm not doing it that way. So we'll keep going. Uh, Kevin, you've got what? 10 millimeter? 10 millimeter. It's 10, okay. guys we got both the bolts out two ten millimeter we use a deep one but honestly it might have been better for us to use a non-deep socket uh, and that's going to give us a little more room you got a wire so zip like tied to the bottom of it the zip tied or just clipped onto this yeah, zip tied no, no zip tied to tie. this but this part that should pop off oh, okay i got you so and can you grab that flashlight wire over there kevin sure. just so you can see a little better so as we're pulling it up we can see that there is this little clip here i didn't see that from the top but again it shouldn't be hard to just pop that off like a flathead kevin will get that off and then once I have this up top, I'm going to line it up and uh, set the cable up so that I can do everything properly. Oh yeah, that's much better. Yeah, I'm thinking that's just like wrapped around there. You grab the pick, you're trying to stab yourself? Yeah, it's my favorite thing to do, stab yeah. myself. There we go. Alright, so we got this up there. Let me grab the new part and we'll set them side by side. What I plan on doing is flipping it upside down and pretty much swapping this right over to the other one. So let me grab the other part and then we'll show you how that's done. All right guys, hopefully that light is not causing any glare. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the parts side by side so that I can line everything up properly and make sure everything is the same. It is identical. Of course, it's a Mopar part. So I expected that. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do first is pull this over, hopefully, and get this out. Looks like I can just pull this spring and pop it right out. All right, now getting it out of here, you're gonna need to turn it and then squeeze and then just kind of walk it out. Once that's done, I'm gonna move this part out of the way. I like to keep everything in uniform. I'll bring my new part over. I'm gonna start by flipping that in. Again, pull this spring back. And boom, that should do it. So that's got that all good to go. So next we're gonna to wanna to drop it back into place. We know this went on there, so I'll be the good noodle and pop that back on. We'll set this back into place and I'll start putting my bolts in. Now something to talk about is alignment on getting this perfectly aligned. I don't believe it's gonna be like it was on some of the older cars where like everything's gotta be like to the you know, 16th of an inch, but I will check the hood when I close it. And if I feel like it needs to go up or down, then I'll adjust it. But I don't think it's gonna come to that. So I'm gonna finish bolting this in and tightening it down. And then I'm gonna try to get it kind of lined up. I'm gonna try to look at the dirt lines. Honestly, guys, when you're doing this, just look at the dirt lines of the old one and just try to line it up with that. That should get you pretty close. Cause obviously if you're way over here compared to over here, that might cause issues, but I can actually see um, the dirt line of where the old one sat. Now I'm just gonna line it up to that. That should be pretty good. Right, guys so i've got everything tightened back in the two 10 millimeter bolts are in i plug my wire back up as well 
<clears throat> of course, I showed you that we put this on the cable. Kevin's gonna pull the cable to make sure that it works. Yep, cable is working. Uh, what I'll also do is I'm gonna try to get this to think that it's locked. It's kind of hard because the spring, but I guess we'll just close it, make sure it works. Uh, so let's see. Let's just see where it's at. Let me just see, make sure that works. Okay, pop it. Beautiful. So what else I'll do? And again, as far as alignment went, I just went to my dirt marks, but I'm gonna close it again. And just check for how the hood looks. It looks pretty good. I'm not seeing, if I, if I put my hand on it flat, it feels great. All the lines look good. Man, this thing needs a good wash and wax. You can actually see some ghosting from my old stripe if you hit the right angle. Pop it one more time, Kevin. Beautiful, that lab sounds works great. Different. Sounds clean, it like sounds different. a spring is good. Okay, so let's give it a test. Hopefully it's going to work. Where did I put my keys? They're in my pocket. So let's do a quick test of while it is open. Nothing as expected. Go ahead and close it, Kevin. There we go. Hi guys, so uh, you saw that I got the start up just, just great. It started right up when the hood was closed, still didn't work when it was open. So now that I know all of this is good, I'm gonna pop these plastic pieces back in. They're very, you know, simple again. It's just got the metal clips on the bottom and you've got this side. You know, if any of these didn't come through with it, you may wanna check inside the holes and you may have to pull them off to repop them on. But otherwise, you're gonna, oh no, I did have the wrong one. I'm sorry, you had the right one. I was managing up with that guy. Yeah, you were, you were right. So we're gonna just feed these back on. You may actually have to like almost hinge it in. Mm. Yeah, the back's gotta go in first. There we go. All right. Get that on and good. That's it right there. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys. So, hopefully, this video was helpful. Uh, I want to thank Kevin for the help, and yeah. I'll put all the information into the um, into the description of the video as far as the part number and the tools we use and just kind of step by step i mean this should be a very quick video it only took us about 10 15 minutes to do this and i'm just so glad that it's working again again it's super cold outside and it's just not it is not worth coming into this car and, and freezing so if it was helpful be sure to like subscribe share the video uh, it means a lot I, I think i'm shy of like 400 subscribers and i know i don't do this for like a living or even post a lot um, but it's fun for me and uh, I like to have my friends over. Kevin's over today. We had Brad over earlier. He's the one who has the Beetle. Uh, we had another truck that we may do a video on where it's similar to the Cadillac we did before where the idler arm and Pittman arm are sloppy. This one's even worse than the Cadillac that we did because we've got a, um, what do you call it, like actual death wobble. We're driving and the car is going left and right. So anyway, hope you liked the video and I'm out. See ya.